part of the Press Play Podcast Network. About time. It feels like it's been so long since football has taken place. It's almost ridiculous, actually. So, you don't think this year's gone by? Like, for me, this year's gone by. No, no, heck no. I feel like, for me, I feel like it's been so long since football has taken place. It's ridiculous. That's how I feel. See, this year's flown by so much, and I don't want it. Like, I've, I've actually very much a I can't wait for football. I can't wait for the fall. I can't wait, you know, for the season and the, I already put my decorations up. I don't want to hear it. I mean, I'm usually like even more excited, but I'm turning mm-hmm. 40 this year. Oh, 40 years so, young. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Don't look at um, it. Like you, still, you got a long. So I don't want it to come. I'm like waiting. I'm like, no, I don't want it. But You're whatever. Right. I'm so excited. I got so excited. I got so excited watching you. I'm Big Ten Network on. Saturday. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate your support. I, you know what? I was the the way I felt about that. I felt like at the beginning of it, I was it was like playing football again. Like you yeah. sit you sit in the locker room and you you've been preparing for this moment, and when you get out there, you kind of got the jitters. But once you get going again, it's like everything kind of settles. Mm-hmm. That's how I was for like my first segment. Like I was so amped up and so ready to go, and I had so much information. Yeah. And once I got through the first like segment, I like calmed down, and that's when I was like, "All right, I'm back in my mode. I'm back in my element." But like yeah. my first one was kind of rough for me. No, I thought you. I thought you did great, and you can. I mean, you probably the crowd alone has just got to be like you know super exciting behind you and amping you up even more i would assume yeah, right yeah because you, you feel the energy and it yeah. was like i said it was the first it was the first game for a lot of schools obviously they had week zero but week one like that was their first game all the fans was fired up and it had me fired up so it was yeah i had to settle down but it was good yeah. though you know it was good i think from here on out i should be good yeah well i loved waking up saturday morning i made myself a cup of coffee and i was settling right in watching it so it was uh <laughs> It was great. It was just a great morning to wake up and be like, oh, it's back. That's you know, there's just so much around football. You know what I mean? It's the food. It's the atmosphere. It's like the cool in the air. It's the, you know, laying on the couch. It's just like the there's weather. so much great stuff about it. Well, the weather it seems like it's about to like take a little dip this weekend. So are you going to the game Sunday? No. So look, I have not been known to plan the best in my life. However, um, I have a bachelorette party to go to this weekend. Oh, so you won't be there. I will not be there. And um, the following weekend, I'm in Sonoma for my friend's 40th birthday. So shout out, mm-hmm. Didi. You, uh, she turned the big 4-0. So, um, yeah. before 40 me. 40 years young. Yeah. So I have back-to-back trip weekends, which I'm, like, super excited about. One's in the... Did I say I'm going they're to not, City? They're not home. home. They're not, are they home next week, too? No, but just me not being... I'm going to be traveling. So I think I land... I'm hoping maybe I can like watch it on the plane or something. I'm, I don't know how I'm going to do this on Sunday. Gotta get one of them United flights. Yeah. Well, I'm on Southwest, which I think Southwest is pretty good with TVs on the flights. I haven't flown Southwest in a long time. Um, I don't know. I'm going to be hungover and amped. So it's going to be a weird combination, but and tired and probably should, sweating. You know what? We, yeah. we should record our episode that night. <laughs> 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 you imagine the takes really good content there because you just be unfiltered you just tell it like it is. <laughs> <laughs> you do not want to catch me on a hungover like hangover anxiety day i had one of those a couple weeks ago it was one of the worst i've had in a while and like it was because i was traveling i was in boston for work and i was like and i came back the next that like friday i had to go to my cousin's wedding and i was just irate about drivers and people and my mom commenting on my love life it was just like one thing after the other there was at one point i just looked at her and i was like do you really think that right now is the time to be mama, mama, questioning you, my love life 
Like, Mama just want to see you happy. Mommy, she goes, I just love you. I'm like, okay, well, it is not the time. <laughs> it's not the time. Um. Anyway, I, I plan on being, I don't know how I could be in a bad mood, honestly, on Sunday because it's the opener. It's at home. It's, you know, I won't be there. Um, it's the Cowboys, mm. you know, Tom it's Brady's team, it's but like Tom New Brady's America's on the team. call. Tom Brady. Yeah. How do you feel about, how do you think Brady's going to do this year? I think that Brady will be excellent because Brady's going to, to me, I think he's going to be unfiltered. Um, yeah. He's gonna just tell it like it is. And it's going to be a new voice. Obviously, you know, when you're one of the greatest to ever do it, people want to hear the game from your perspective and how you see things. And I think he's done an excellent job at, you know, some of like his TikToks that he's did, some of his Twitter posts, um, some of his podcasts that he's been on and some of the things he's been saying, you know, it's it's gained a lot of traction to where I think a lot of people are going to tune in just to hear what he says, because he is saying things that are very true, you know, mm -hmm. like talking about how rookies shouldn't be playing right away and how the game how college has dumbed the game down and guys coming to the NFL and they're not quite up to speed and not developed but we keep at rushing them in there and mm -hmm. expecting them to perform I think that's a very true saying um so just you know hearing stuff like that kind of makes you makes people be like oh that's interesting I never saw it from that light and I think mm -hmm. that's make people tune into it and I think he's going to have to, I mean, obviously year one is going to be a, a, a home run for him. Mm -hmm. After that, you know, once he tells all the stories and all those things, now it actually will be about, you know, him doing the homework, him knowing these guys inside and out. So it was like Tony Romo. When Tony Romo first I started. I was literally thinking that. I'm like, I feel like yeah. it's going to be a Tony Romo. Yeah, when like, Tony Romo first start. started, it was like, oh, my God. This he's dude, not he's, he's, up, he's sitting up here predicting the plays. This is the most <laughs> the craziest thing in the world. Then yeah. now it's like, eh, all right, Tony, be quiet. Like, that's yeah. what it is. So hopefully he don't get like that. I think he's charismatic, yeah. charismatic enough um, to continue to have people interested. So, we'll yes. Yeah. Year one, yeah. I think, should be great, though. I I agree. Um, I think everyone's going to be super antsy to hear everything he has to say and what he's going to. And I agree. I think he's going to be unfiltered, and I think that's going to be the probably the best part. I mean, yes, he's going to bring all these new elements to the table and a lot of new analysis, and again, thinking, looking at things a certain way that we wouldn't. Um, but yeah, I just think he is going to be kind of he's going to kind of raw dog it, Tyvis. Mm -hmm. I, I have that's how like, you want it. That's how you want it. Exactly. I mean, the thing is we we've grown up to everybody being by the book. And once you get somebody that goes outside the book, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's like, wow, that's crazy. Like he really said that like, Oh wow. Like that, that's what people really want to hear. Anyway, they want the real, you want to hear the yeah. real the truth, the uncut truth. And I think that's what, obviously he's Tom Brady. It's not like if he says something negatively negative to people, you know, people are going to really question what he's saying because it's Tom Brady. So I think yeah. he got that going for it. If I said it, I would have to have some proof to back up what I say, even though, <laughs> even though ninety eight percent of the things I say is exactly correct. <laughs> but but I'm not a goat, as people would say. Oh yeah, you are. Don't sell yourself short. Um. Well, speaking of quarterbacks, let's start there. Let's just get it out of the way. Mm. Okay. Uh. Last time we talked, um, we were anticipating Deshaun playing in Seattle. Mm -hmm. We all know, obviously, he did not. Yeah. Um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, Tyus, I'm not. You know, I'm not trying to be the Debbie Downer here. Of course you. Um, of course you are. That's what you do. Yeah. I, I mean, That's what you I, I do. do. But you know what? It comes out of anxiety and fear. Is really what it does because it's the fear of the unknown, and mm. that is anxiety, and that is a real thing. And with the Browns, it is probably the most, the biggest question mark we've had as a season starting in a long time i mean for the pure fact of like sure there's there's a lot of things that we know are solid right i, I shouldn't say the whole team because the, we know the defense is going to be solid um but on the offensive side we'll start there that's where the big question mark is and we don't know we we have all these all these tools right in our toolbox but we don't know how they're all going to kind of mesh together we bring in a whole new a whole new offense um you know to, to run it the way that deshaun needs it to run Mm -hmm. Um, but with me, with him, I just, I feel like that was, that's going to come back and bite us somehow and in a lot of different ways. But I think the first one is just clearly the speed, I think off the get-go, like he, and, and I'm so afraid about him getting just like lit up, like just straight up, like 
taken out. And I feel like the preseason, look, not all preseasons are created equal, right? Everyone's going to be using their preseason forever how they need to use it, how they see fit, whether it is developing players, whether it is, you know, um, getting reps again for some of the senior players, like whatever that is, everyone's, everyone's is different. Um, you know, I thought this preseason was going to be really a lot about him and it, it wasn't. And I, first of all, we don't even have a lot of rookies to even groom because we haven't had a first round draft pick in three years. So like, I really thought that this was going to be a, a more, of a, even if they played him earlier in the preseason, I just, I'm worried about him getting hurt even worse. I am worried about the mental capacity um for him the browns are just keeping so much under the hat that like i it's so hard for me to predict how it's going to go i want to i'm going to predict the browns to win on sunday but i'm i'm really worried about it uh dallas scares me so anyway i know i just threw out a lot to you but <laughs> let's start with the sean do you think the pre no preseason reps at all is going to come back to hurt him in the first half of the season yeah, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt a lot of people. I mean, I'm not. I think that you you can't realistically have a new offensive coordinator come in, um, get Tommy Reese in there, get Deuce Staley in there, get Andy Dickerson in there, get a whole entire new offensive staff, and not show all what you're gonna do and have those reps in the preseason game and a live game and expect that it's just gonna be crisp from game right. one. That's just not going to be the case. So I think you need to – you got to make your expectations more realistic. Um, I just want him to take care of the football um, and distribute the ball. I think they're going to start with a, you know, a pretty, pretty vanilla-type game plan at the beginning of it um, just to get him completing some passes, mm -hmm. you know, get him in a rhythm, and then you span you, – you expand your playbook and go from there. I think that when you look at – to me, if they do decide to go back to like his college style where he was running RPOs and things like that, mm -hmm. I think that that is that better. That kind of better suits the the receivers that they have because I think a lot of them are good at obviously running routes, catching the ball, mm -hmm. and getting yards after the catch. You know, I'm I obviously you know Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy is great route runners. But I also think that they can be effective. Not Amari Cooper because he's up there in age, but, you know, Elijah Moore, David Njoku, I think these guys can, you know, get the ball in their hands and make people miss and get up the field. And I think if they run that RPO, it'll be a lot of slants, a lot of quick throws. You know, I was talking to uh, Zach Jackson because he said he was watching a lot of the, you know, tra training camp, and he said a lot of stuff was quick, get the ball out of his hands quick. And, you know, mm -hmm. and I think – if that's going to be the style that they're going to do, I guess that does kind of fit their personnel. And when you got a left tackle situation, you don't want your quarterback sitting there patting the ball. So you kind of do right. want them to get the ball in and out of his hands pretty quickly. Um, I do think when you look at um, the, the Cowboys secondary, you know, having Jay Lou in the slot, I think he's an underrated nickel, but I think he's really good. I know he went to the UM. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he went there, uh, but he's actually a really good player. When I he was there, when I was there for preseason with Dallas in 2019, and he's just a he's overall he's a good dude and he's a really solid competitor. So I know he'll be good in the slot um, against Jerry Judy. Um, as far as Amari goes, Amari is every time he plays Dallas, he's gonna want to get back because I don't think yeah. things ended well there. You know, you think and, still. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 gonna be up every time. And you don't think there's any any lingering animosity about the latest? Did you hear? I'm sure that you did about what the Browns offered for. Um, yeah, and I said, I, listen, if I was Coop, I said that before Coop said anything. I said, if I'm Coop, I I take that deal, please put me in the deal. You gonna put me in San Francisco? I'm so glad that didn't happen, man. You gonna tell you gonna send me to San Fran? We gonna win the Super Bowl this year? Yeah, terrible. Yeah, I, if I am heck yeah, he wanted that deal. That's do you why think? Do you think Barry? Like, do you think he knew? Do you think Barry said to him, or like, look, this is there's an opportunity that you know there we could that you may be sent, you know, to San Francisco. I like, mean, if they or what? What's, what's that conversation like? Does it happen? How much it, of a heads up are they getting? If the organization respects you, they'll let you know. They'll let yeah. you know, hey, we 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 thinking about shopping you, you know, or you know, if they they thinking about cutting you like they should. If they really respect you, they'll give you that heads up. I know a lot of 
players that I play with have said, you know, they at least give me the heads up. Like just and they GMs is pretty good at doing that. And I think the deal that they gave Amari, it was kind of like a if they was going to part ways with him, he can't say that they did him wrong because they guaranteed his salary for the year. Right. So he's getting 20 million. So they're like, if we're going to be done with you after this year, at least we gave you 20 million on your way out the door to whereas other teams would have never done that. So I right. think that's why to him, he was like, okay, you, I'm getting 20 million and you're going to send me to a team that's going to be in the Super Bowl. Right. Allegedly. Yeah. That's a win-win for me. And I think that they would, they felt we're doing right by Amar. It's not like we're sending him to, the Titans or something like that, or somebody or the Cardinals or somebody like that. We're actually helping him. He's at that age and he's at that stage of his career where he's got the money. He just wants the ring. The one thing that's missing is the championship ring. Mm. And if you're gonna put him in a position to win that ring. I feel like that's as an organization, that's the right thing to do. So I don't think he was mad about that at all. That's why I think he said what he said. But back to him against Dallas, yeah, he's still going to be smoked there because they traded him for a fifth-round pick. That's a spit in the face. And I don't think him and Mike McCarthy got along. I mm -hmm. talked to this guy who covers Dallas, and he was just explaining how, you know, it just – things didn't end well with Amari there, and he just didn't fit what Mike McCarthy was trying to get done there as far as – attitude wise which is wild because Amari's like a quiet yeah, guy like he's he he just didn't fit with, with Mike so under the radar with that so with yeah it, so to me I think he is up for him and then on top of that he has no contract past this year like this is it so Amari has to go out there and try to prove like if it ain't to the Browns it's to 31 other teams like I can still be something next year so He's going to play with passion anyway. So I'm not worried about that. The only, obviously the biggest glare is the left tackle spot. You got Jack Conklin. So actually before you finish, do you remember the episode we did? Oh, to the left tackle. Oh remember yeah. That? And you said that's the most important position on the field. Yeah, how? And here we are. And you, I, look, you told I give, me, I give you told me, no, no, no. You told me Tyvis, you are out of your mind. And it's guess what I'm, I'm, I still believe, I still believe that, but I will say that, mm. Depending on how this goes, you could totally redeem that take. <laughs> and totally this year. redeem yes. yourself. <laughs> exactly. Very much. That could be you this season. I'm just saying, no, I think Jack Conklin would be fucked because I think what will happen is, first of all, it's not even really about Jack Conklin. It's about Andy Dickerson. That's really what this whole thing is about. Because if it was Bill Callahan at offensive line, if he was still the old line, because we wouldn't say anything because we know that this guy, whether it was Jack yeah. Conklin or if it was Tyvis Powell at left tackle, you'd be like, you know what? We're going to be fine because right. he's got a proven track record that he gets those guys ready to play. He was down to his fourth and fifth string last year, and yet they were fine. So it's really an Andy Dickerson thing, and that's why everybody is all like, oh, oh. But I think what we got to realize is that Kevin Stefanski, you know, whether you like him or not, Anytime that there's a glaring issue on the offense, mm -hmm. somehow, some way, he still finds a way to win games despite that. You think about the tackles that went down last year. You think about the quarterbacks that was in. He found ways to continuously still put points up well, on the, the team. The team game. was special year last year for sure. That's what I'm saying. So I'm not at this point. I feel like I I got to give Kevin the benefit of the doubt. Like yeah. proven time and time again. No matter what the situation is, he still is gonna have a chance to win those games. And I feel like this is the one this could be another feather in his cap if he finds a way to get this done. Yeah, I I want to give him the benefit of the doubt too. I, I do. I mean, last has year. Has like he said, has he not earned that? Yeah, no, he has for sure. I mean, I think, you know, it's just I'm a little curious on how it's gonna work with, you know, Ken Dorsey and him calling plays and how that's I don't know I, I if we're brought in all of those I, again I don't want to I don't want to get into the who should be play calling but like I do wonder oh, Kevin how that should be. is gonna work you don't think Kevin should be play calling well if it's gonna be if, if, we, if we brought in Ken for this like this is for this style like this is where you know and if and if Deshaun hasn't shined in Stefanski's offense right Blacko ass. If it is a different style, if we're bringing in everybody, why would why would Ken not be the one? I guess at this point, but I again, I don't want to. We could go down that path if you want, but I'm just 
I, well, I, that's a big I question just, mark too. Everything's a question mark. I think that's what's scary. So, Holly, that what? man just came off a season where he just just balled on offense, calling plays. He was. I know, on, but that was flying. Was on though. It was fire. a different offense. Was why a different would offense. he? Why would I give that up? See, this the thing. This the thing. I, and we got to We got to really dip this in the bud because it's really you. it's really getting <laughs> ridiculous. Like this, the play calling stuff is so it's so overblown. I tell everybody the most important things is the steps that who's in the room when you are creating the sheet. That's the most important part. And who is? They're all in it. It's a whole right. thing. Everybody's giving the same amount of effort of creating the sheet. He goes, Ken, on first and second down, what's your favorite? What's your best plays? Then they'll go to Deshaun and say, Deshaun, what plays do you like? Then they might ask Amari, what plays do you want to mm -hmm. see in the game? And they will create the sheet. Play calling is nothing but him looking at the sheet of plays that everybody has already contributed to and selecting one. That's so it's it's broken down into situations. If you ever see a play calling sheet, it's first and ten, it's first and second down, it's third down, first, third and short, third and long, third and medium, first, second and five, second and seven. It's like that's what the play sheet looks like. And you got like three, three or four or five plays under each one of those columns that say, if we're in this situation, this is the play. Now, what you have to do is say, which is already game plan, if they're in cover two, this is the cover two beater. This is the cover three beater. This is the cover four beater. This is the man beater. Like that, you have to pick those plays. And that's all it is. Like it, it's not, it's not what y'all think. Like people But think, that's a lot of the prep, right? But what about the end game, right? What about... Have so in game, so in game, how it would go is Kevin. Kevin is not. See, people got Kevin as this stubborn guy that don't that y'all think that people think he doesn't take outside advice. He's actually the exact opposite. He listens to a lot of people's advice and he listens and he takes it all in. And he mm -hmm. if he's if he believes it works, he'll use it. So what will happen is I think the preseason was a test run because. How am I – think about this. As a head coach, I'm about to give play calling over to a guy that just got fired. He just got fired for play calling. So I'm about to give him this the keys? Like, no, I need to I need to feel him out. I need to see how he right. is. So in the preseason, if you paid attention in the preseason, Kevin was letting Ken and a lot of other coaches call plays because he wanted to see, you right. know, where they was at, where they head is. So I think what happens is in the game – He'll ask, he'll say, Ken, what you got for this play? It's first, it's first and 10. What you got? What you want to run? And I think Ken will give them a play and they'll run it and they'll see how it goes. Now, I think he, Kevin has veto power. Kevin can go, you know what? No, nah, I don't think, let's, let, let me run this one. Like, I think that's how it's going to go. But you got to fill them out first. You can't just hand the keys over to this stranger right. after he literally just got fired. For being yeah, an so everyone gets fired in that way. Like I have to, I gotta earn. You gotta earn the trust. Like I think that that's something that can come later in the season. Like and on top of that, you're trying to get Deshaun back, and I, it's a lot. It's a lot. So I, I, I don't fault Kevin. I think it is the right decision for him to at least start this season off. And if Ken continues to give great plays and have some success, you know, over the course of this season, as we get towards the end. Okay, maybe he gets more input, and then maybe next year or two years from now, maybe he does take over play calling duties. But I don't blame Kevin right now for. I don't think Savancy's ever going to give it up as long as he's coaching here. I did, I, I don't. I mean, there's been there's been a couple different work, times he could have. If it's working, if he's having some success, like I, I just, think he still likes having that control. I think he. I, I, I don't blame him. <laughs> I don't blame him. I mean. If if this ship gonna sink, I'm crashing it. That's what I say. If this thing gonna go down, it's gonna be because of me. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. Um, <clears throat> I would probably hide and duck and be like, it was him. That's fine. I'll take the blame, which he does uh, anyway, which I give him credit for that. He does. But almost to a right fault. Sometimes it's say, too much. Sometimes it's not even, it's just flaky. It's like, all right, <laughs> yeah. it, at least if you're going to do that, I get it. It's always going to be, it's on me. This is on me. It's on me. Like you can. It, I do that. Look, I do, even when I know it ain't my fault. It's on me. But that's what I'm saying. I, I don't, me. there's got to be, look, I, he's never going to throw anybody under the bus. Look, they, they never will. I'll say it never. And I don't fault you them totally really for that. I think that that's a really great thing that they keep a lot in house. But sometimes I think they keep too much in house, and I just we always want to see a peek. That's the your and... that's your media side talking right there. They keep too much in house. <laughs>
<laughs> the media and you want to know everything. That's what it is. Well, of course. Oh, I got the, I got the FOMO. it's not everybody's it. business. It's not everybody's business. I have FOMO so bad in life, <laughs> just about pretty much everything, even at work. Like my job at work, I touch like every department that I know how everything is going. And it, if I don't know, or I'm not a part of something, I'm like, why did I not, why did I not know that? I like to be in the know. You know what? That's we're complete opposites. Cause I, I stay out of grown folks business. Probably why I have anxiety. <laughs> Cause I worry about so much shit that I don't need to. Yeah. I don't, I only worry, <laughs> I only worry about things that matter. Well, good for you. I don't know <laughs> that luxury. <laughs> you gotta worry. You gotta um, stop worrying about stuff that don't matter in the long yeah. Um, all right. Well, moving on to a non question mark, I think what we, what I do feel really good about, um, is the defense, um, you know, not a shocker at all, or by any means that the Browns at home last year were just insane. You know, they allowed just 3.7 yards per snap, um, which was the fewest in the NFL by 0.8. And then on the road, they allowed 2.1 more yards per snap at 5.8 yards, which raised obviously some, pretty large uh red flags for us of why so one two questions for you what grade are you giving the defense going in to the season now and what do you think the adjustments have been made with Schwartz and the defense when it comes to going on the road um, obviously it's hard not to give them an A. Um, anytime you just kind of run back that defense, obviously you got a veteran Mike linebacker in there who's got experience in this defense, has made plays in this defense. You know, that's that's gonna be great. You added pass rushers, not on the outside, but in the interior, which is the one thing I think you were kind of lacking a little bit, getting Quentin Jefferson in there. And you still got a bunch of veterans in there, and guys are just healthy. Um, you got to give them an A for that. Um, the difference that I think that they add this year is they, they got to change up just playing man to man 80 snaps a game. Like that's, uh, yes, you got the players to do that, but you know, it's, it's, it's when you get towards the end of the season, that's a lot on the, on a DB's body. So I think you got to give them some smoke breaks in there. Plus you want to throw these deep, these offenses off. If you, if you're going to be a heavy man team, you know, at least every now and again, throw a cover three in there, cover, throw a cover two in there, do that, make it all look the same. So the quarterback has no tail. And you know what? That's how you get interceptions. You'll throw mm -hmm. it right to it because he didn't know that you was not in man. Uh, obviously, it's a lot more than that that goes into it. But I think you do have to throw some disguises in there. Also, one thing we didn't do a lot was blitz. And I think that a, a guy like JOK, you know, he had three and a half sacks last year. He had like 20 TFL. Nice little contract. Yeah, got a year? nice contract. I think that you can utilize him more. Take, let's let's take it a step further. You know, it's year two. He knows the thing like the back of his hand. I think he can be utilized in that pass rush, especially opposite of Miles, or you can put him on the same side mm -hmm. as Miles. You send the, if you send him on the same side as Miles and he's as effective of getting to the pass rush, well, now that line got to slide off with a double team on Miles and pick him up. If they don't, it's a sack. So now it slides him off, slides the double team off Miles. Now Miles is winning his one-on-one, -on -one and now you got a ton mm. of pressure coming. So I think Jim Schwartz got to be a little bit more creative in the blitz patterns, um, getting the guys involved. It, but to me, like I said, it, it's health. That back end has to stay healthy. It was it was too much. Dale Pitt got went down with the groin injury. Juan Thornhill had the calf injury. Um, Denzel, I think, missed two games, I think, or something like that. So – those guys got to stay healthy, especially. Are you worried about Denzel? I am. A little Five every, concussions, man. Yeah, a little bit because that's... once you, once you get to six, that's when you had a conversation. You know, I I've had two former players that two former teammates, I should say, that once they got to six, you know, that's when they said, yeah, you, you done, you, you out of yeah. here. <laughs> so yeah, he's at five. He's got to be, but. You know, it, he's young. Like he's not going to stop. Like he said, he had no intentions of ever thinking. Right. Time, which I get it because I would have said the same thing. Like, I'm not, no, I'm not about to retire. No, I don't care about my life 20 years from now. I care about right now. So I get why he said that, but it is something that, you know, he got to be conscious of. And I think it's something that they got to be conscious of, but I don't want him not to be him. You know, like if you're mm -hmm. going to, if you're going to go out, at least go out being who you were, you know? Um, but it's not even about him remotely. It's the safeties because I think Dale Pitt in particular is the guy, I think he was the missing piece 
I think he can make this defense go from good to being great. You know, I think that he's a student of the game. I remember last year when I was at OTAs, he didn't even like practice was over. He didn't even go into the thing. He was watching tape like immediately. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, this dude is serious about his craft. He reminds me a little bit of how I was, you know, you got to be, you got to put in that extra film st study to be able to know when things are happening. Mm -hmm. And I thought at the beginning of the season, you know, his first couple of games, he was rated as one of the top safeties in the game because of some of the plays that he was making. And I felt like that kind of went away, you know, when he, once he was gone. So those two need to stay healthy. Juan Thornhill and Del Pitt. And as long as those two are healthy, I think that would erase a lot of stuff. I think that's more plays that can be made because I think those two guys are a really good safety duo. What do you, how do you feel about the confidence level overall in the locker room for the season and the confidence in Deshaun? Are you feeling, again, I, I don't think I want to say good, high, yes, for sure, you know, but in the locker room, in the locker room, see, the thing about them is they see Deshaun and they've already seen what some of the plays that Deshaun has made in practice. And, you know, they'd be like, oh, my goodness, if wait, if y'all could just see this, blah, blah, blah. So they already think the world of Deshaun. And, you know, I thought I thought Deshaun won the team back over last year, the Baltimore game, because you think remember the first Baltimore game. If I'm on the team and he says, don't worry, I'm playing. And we get to Sunday and he say, I ain't playing. And I'm going to look at him like, bro, you just sabotaged us. <laughs> so I think when you think about now, fast forward to the next Baltimore game, he's got the messed up shoulder. He's got the sprained ankle. Yeah. But yeah, he like bleep that. I ain't coming out. Second I, half. I, like mm -hmm. I, I owe y'all this game. And he goes out there and wins that game with that type of injury. Like it's like, all right, this dude is a soldier. He a front line soldier. Like I, I can I can rock with him. So I think he won the team back over after that game. And I think that's why it was so important for him to win that game before he ended up getting his surgery and his season got shut down. So I think he won everybody back over with that. And I think everybody's gonna be behind him because I think he's a I do think he's a dog. I do. I think he's a dog. He just he just need to experience some success in the first, and as soon as he catches that that rhythm and that success early. I think he'll be locked in and making a ton of plays. Mm -hmm. That's my whole take. It, it everybody knows that it rise. It's all about what Deshaun does. He's got to get back to being because he was at, at a point. It was him and Patty was like neck and neck. Mm -hmm. Patty kind of took off on him. He got to yeah. get back to being there. And I don't. I'm not saying that's gonna happen this year. It's gonna take a couple of years to get back to a, like a Patty Mahomes level, but. He needs to at least show some life. That well, we don't have, but we don't have those. We don't have those years. Like we don't. Like we don't. Not with this. It's not. Not, not with I this don't, team. I don't need him to go out there and be Patty Mahomes this year. I don't. No, but I, think I don't think we this need team him to be good does. enough, right? Yeah, I think he needs that's to what I'm saying. Good yeah. And as long as Stefanski doesn't get a little too cute on Sunday, you know, he likes to get cute. He's cute. But he likes to get cute. The, that's he plays. The, he likes he, Titus. Last year. So last year. Last year. Last year he got cute. He got cute a few, quite a few times. No, he did not. This was last year was the first time in a long time that I didn't hear fire Stefanski or he needs to give up play. No, call. I don't think it, I don't. It doesn't need to be a fire situation. I just he he's, <laughs> he gets real cute on some of these plays you know that don't. We live at? At? You know what we live at? They call that show immediately. Fire! <laughs> right, they turn right into Vince McMahon. You are fire. <laughs> that that I mean, that's I, where they at. Well, I all right. We'll just move on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um so let's let's turn Thank into you Sunday. Ah, you know what? I pray. I, listen, let me. Oh God, he's getting I, on his knees. Everybody, I pray this man throws for like three. 50. I hope so too. You I think want, I, you don't hope I that? want you to come up here and you better say, I want you to get on this podcast and publicly apologize. Oh, I will. To Kevin I will and totally. <laughs> that you think man, I wouldn't drop 350. I want it. No, I don't want to hear nothing. <laughs> and, and as much as I just haven't, I, I will absolutely do that in a heartbeat <laughs> if that's what happens. I just don't have enough to go off at all that that. I'm gonna tell you, it's how. more than a possibility. Okay, it's a possibility, <laughs> but I don't know how much more I have off of just how he played four years ago in Houston, and 12 games on the Browns, and 
a really amazing, perfect half against Baltimore. It's just not enough for me to be like, that is an expectation because it's not. And I, and I know it's not, we don't need him to be that, which would be wonderful. And I would be down on my knees also saying, thank you, God. And this is amazing. (laughs) Um, But I just, I, I would, yeah, I want him to be good enough. I want to get through the first well, you know, I told games you games this season. I told you last year. Don't turn the ball over. It, don't, that, be throwing a, don't be throwing a pick on the first. Listen, that defense, play. that defense is good enough. They're good enough for you to right. be in the game or at least win the game. And he's just all you got to do is take care of the football. Actually, that's it's totally really, not, really not that hard. Over. Yeah, that's it. And I it, hope that. And that's look. And that's what I want for Sunday. So as we go into Sunday, that's what I want. I and mean, take care of the football. No turnovers. Exactly. Now you do realize that this team was like, were they like thirty second in turnovers last year? They were like the worst. They were turnovers. last. The runs were last. Yeah. So you know, I just we let's, let's penalties. Keep, let's keep that in mind. I, first, I don't. I need them to at least make it to the top half start. of the league and, and then this. That that's that. If there's anything, I, I'm I'm praying keep the you know. I know we we will turn the ball over but let's really try to keep it to a minimum, if not zero, on week one. I think that's going to just make, obviously, uh, a really big difference. Um, Dak coming into town, Micah Parsons, it's it's a little scary. No, it's not, because you know what? They offensive line is not great either. They got two rookies, and they have a rookie left tackle who has to go up against Miles. So, Therefore, let's just call it even. Let's just call that. Let's call that a wash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's call whoever, whatever offensive line plays the best will win this game. Let, let's just call that. That's what that'll be. Um. Well, what is uh, what's your uh, what's your first prediction? Um, my first prediction, I got the I, I got the Browns twenty one seventeen. I'm gonna say 24 21 Browns. I gotta pick the Browns in the opener, obviously. But I just hope we don't get just annihilated out there. I I I don't I can't handle being embarrassed. All right. I I just don't I I am a perpetual Cleveland Browns fan. I know. I know. At home, home, look, the last season we're we are riding high on our home performance. So I'm you're right. Like, but there is a part of me that, you know. Watson gets just blitzed and out of the game, and he's like, I, I don't know. I don't want to – they're not going to on wood here. What do you think he's injury, bro? He got hurt twice in his career. Yes, I do think he is now. I think he's he – he, he he's, he's he got hurt in, that. Yes. He got, he got hurt his rookie year tearing his ACL. He got hurt last year. That's the only two times he's ever been hurt. Yeah, but how much other time has he played? <laughs> for as much time as he played. For is his, Joe his, Burrow injury? injury? Is Joe Burrow Yes, he injury, is. Bro? Okay. He can't walk out on the field without falling. Just saying, this man got hurt twice in what? How many seasons has he that played? It, it, it is what it is, though. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's played 12 games for the Browns. That's like, it. He's been in the league for like eight years. <laughs> like, he got hurt twice. He's broaching that for sure. Uh, wow. And I look, I, I won't get into it, but I also think that maybe there's some lingering shoulder stuff. But hey, I, I don't know. I, I, I am. No positive poly I, no, um, no, here on listen, out through the listen, weekend. Okay, no, I'm starting I ain't, it now. I wasn't no, maybe the last forty minutes. What we ain't gonna right do now. is we ain't hearing none of that injury. I ain't hearing no. I ain't hearing because of no starters in training camp. I ain't hearing no shoulder injury. Those I ain't hearing no line. I ain't hearing none of that because y'all did this to yourself. That y'all no, we didn't. How? Not that, your, none of the, that's I'm, our issue. I'm talking about the Browns. The Browns did that to Oh, me. yeah. I thought you might. Not playing the starters. Not all. I know. All, that's y'all. Y'all, did, y'all chose to do that. So, game one, I ain't hearing it. I'm not hearing that. that with ain't you. nobody going for that. that I, I'm, this is, I'm just telling you right now, don't even say it. <laughs> and we love excuses. So, this don't is going to be an interesting. It. It's going to be an interesting first game. It really is. It's going to be a big test. And... Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I'm, st- I'm like on the borderline of the, the bliss era. You know what I mean? I'm not like totally in it. And I think it's really for the pure fact that we just don't know. And it's the most question mark season. And it's really going to be a toss up on, on Sunday. If they lose, I hope they keep it close. Um, but no, I'm 24, 21. I'm going to go with it. I like the way you Dustin like, Hopkins is gonna win it for us. 
Calling it now. I, I don't think so. Cutting out of that. I think uh, 2117 sounded about right. All right. Well, we'll see. Well, we'll be back because football's back. It's we exciting can... stuff. Where are you heading to uh, this weekend? The state pen. I mean, Penn State. Ooh. Penn State. We got, yeah, you know, we got sticks on. Stick City going to be on. You know, it's fun. What's the weather like? Man, let's talk about it. it's gonna make my brain. Oh, really? 68, 68, I think it rain. I think I seen it. Is supposed to be beautiful for the opener here, like kind of a little, little cool, like mid 60s, but I mean, great football weather. That's fine. I mean, you know, I'm inside the press box, so mm-hmm. that's what it does. Mm-hmm. But yeah, mm-hmm. <clears throat> all right, well, we'll be back next week. Um, hopefully talking about a dub and uh, get me ready for week two and uh, first one of the season let's hear it Tyvis here we go brownies here we go oh let's start off one and oh let's go